How to create a Christmas card using React Refiber. Hi, in this video I will show you how I created this Christmas card experience. It will be a mix of tutorial because I will explain how to do all the technical things I did to build this card, but in a second part of this video I will explain the process I followed that led me to this result. So the topics covered are scroll animation, mouse events, how to customize the cursor, 3D text, animations, but I will soon make a full complete video about this topic, post-processing effects like blur and bloom, and also how to instantiate multiple skin mesh models. Custom cursor. Here you can see my cursor is not the default one, we have a red dot followed by a bigger dot. To create a customized cursor what I did was in the global CSS. To disable the cursor, to set overflow hidden so when we reach the borders it won't create an additional scroll bar. And I also have CSS but first let's look at the cursor. The HTML part is 2 div, so the dot, which is the small dot, and the outline, which follows our main dot. If we go into CSS, here I used plain CSS. It's 8 pixel, rounded, centered to be exactly where you point at. It's a bit transparent, so when the outline comes behind, it really appears red. And for the outline, it's the same but just it's bigger and more transparent. So let's have a look at the code. We have a use effect with mouse events listener. When it moves we just save the x and y position and we call a request animation frame to animate our cursor position. You can see I've been quite a pig because I use global variables here instead of using a state. And our animate function what it does is it directly position our cursor where our mouse is, so that's why the small dot really follow where we are. And what we do is we calculate the distance of the bigger dot and we make it come slowly to our small dot with a speed which is defined here. If you change this value, the speed will increase or decrease. Mouse events. The only mouse event I made was to hover the star, it becomes brighter. And if we click on it, the sound is playing and the light stay turned on. Here we have the mesh from our star because it's named star.geometry. We have events like on pointer over, which means our pointer is over the star and when it's out. So we just change a state to say it's over or not. And when we click, we check if our Christmas sound is playing, we pause it and if it's not playing which means it's paused we start to play it. How the colors change it's when our star is hovered so with this state we will put the intensity to 4 so it becomes brighter. If it's not the case we check if we are playing or not. If we are not playing it's off so it's 0 and if it's playing it's 2 so the light is on but less bright than when it's hover, so we have that night effect when we bring the mouse over the star. 3D text. For the text, I'm using a component named text3d from React 3 Dry. We need to pass to it the font we are using, so it requires a JSON file, which is a typeface. There is this useful link where you can send a font and it will generate for you the JSON file you will be able to use in your 3D project. Then you have a lot of settings you have to fine tune, but I copied it from an example from a 3JS journey curse. And we are also using a matcap texture, which leads to this realistic effect of gold skin. And they all come from this matcap's library textures from GitHub. If you look at the text, you can see two things. The first one is it's floating in the air. I didn't use animation to do it. I used the component named float with the default settings and it gave me that nice effect I was looking for. And I also faced another issue which was my text is very big so I wanted to make it to be responsive so on mobile it's still visible and I don't see only half of the text. So how did I make it? 
what I did is I stored the dimensions in a state and I used a debounce function to update the dimensions so it doesn't recalculate it at every resize but every 300 milliseconds so it doesn't overload the process. And once we resize, our dimensions is updated. And for the dimension, what I did was a rule of three. For me, the good size was 1.75 which looked good on 1600 width. So I made a calculation to have this ratio every time. And this is what it looks like. If it go bigger, the text is bigger. And if the screen is very small, the text adapts and is always visible. You can see there is more code here for animation, but I will talk about it in the animation part. Scroll based animations. As you can see, there are a lot of animations in this screen. The Merry Christmas is going further away on the left and its scale is going down. The plane in the background, which looks like a card, if you are mystical like me, when it comes, it becomes the stage where centers are dancing. You have the tree, which is rotating and going to the top. And you have the character coming from left and right and rotating. You also have all the gifts exploding from the star and going a bit everywhere and rotating on themselves. Basically, there are only two techniques I used to animate it. To start understanding how it works, I used scroll controls, which come from React 3 Dry. Uh, yes. And we define the number of pages we want. So I put two. One page is uh, an entire screen. And inside our scroll controls, we can use a hook, which is named new scroll, and we know where we are scrolling. So if we go to one of the easiest one, it's Christmas tree. So here I have the position I want, which is minus three. If we go to our Christmas tree, we have the initial position stored in the state. We have use frame, which is called at every frame, so we can animate our three content. And I'm just playing with the positions. I decreased 12 units on the Y axis. I added some magical calculation based on the initial position of Y, which is the minus three and the scroll offset. To let you know scroll offset, a value between zero and one, which is the percentage of scroll. And then I multiplied it by three to have the value I wanted. I'm also doing the same for the rotation. So it do a full spin, which is mat.py based on the scroll offset. So if we look back at it, you can see the star is doing a turn and the tree is doing the turn because our whole tree is rotating and our tree is coming, it's coming from bottom to top. This is something I also did for the gift. So the gifts I created it in experience, but it should be in a separated file. We have all our gifts. They have a random initial position and initial scale. The initial position is the target position when square offset is at the bottom, which is one. So at the beginning it's zero and it's increased until it reach our initial position and even a bit more because I multiplied it by 1.3. And we are doing the same for the scale. So when it's not scale, everything is at zero. So it's really shrinking in a point. And when we scroll, it explodes and reach the real positions. In addition to that, there is a rotation which is not based on the scroll offset, but just on the delta time. So our gifts are always rotating on themselves. So this part is the animation without a library. But let's go to our stage. I wanted to do something less linear, but I wanted to have the plane and to rotate it and go below and then go up. So I prefer to use JSFE to do so. So what I did is I create a timeline. I say, I want the position to go from where I am. At the beginning, it will go from where my stage is. So it's in my experience, it's using this position. This is the default one, the timeline we use. So you don't have to define it again. And then I say it will take a three, which is not second, the time the 
the timeline occurs, it will go to a minus 10 position, so it's going below the tree. The z, it will go zero, so it's coming from back to uh, the front position. And the rotation, it will just go to its normal position. But it's taking more time. I, I said it takes four. So even at the end when it's behind, it's still rotating a bit. And what I did is for one, one quarter, because it's a uh, four unit timeline, I wanted to go from below minus 10 to 3.5 and a bit in front. And how does our timeline work? We just say seek. So it will go to the position we defined and we have the duration, which here will be four because we have uh, four duration. And here we pass what we want. So scroll offset is a percentage of it. So it will be a value between zero and one. And here the duration, it will be four. So we'll have from zero to four and it will seek in the timeline and it's, it's how it animates our stage correctly. This is the same thing I use for Merry Christmas text, which is even easy, but I applied it to the scale and the position. Multiple skinned mesh. If we go to our center model, we didn't choose directly use JLTF because as it is a skin mesh model, it will reuse the mesh if I want to instantiate multiple center, which is something I do here because I have one on the left and one on the right with different animation. And what happened when I used directly use JLTF is only one appeared because it reused the same data. So after looking on Stack Overflow and GitHub, I found a solution, which is a function to clone the whole thing so you can use it multiple times. So I moved it to my hooks and you can use it and it works. Post-processing effects. Post-processing effects are coming from the post-processing library from React 3. So what you need to do is in your canvas to add an effect composer, you can define the multi-sampling and inside of it, add your effect, but it has to be next to your model, your experience. You don't have to wrap everything inside, just your effects. So I used two of them. I used Bloom which is the fact that dot lights are shining. And I also used depth of field, which is the fact here, if you look at the, the tree, the text, the center, it looks very sharp. But if you look at the gifts that are way backward, they look blurry because the focus is really made on the disposition. It comes with parameters that are hard to just guess. So what I did is I used Leva. So here it's hidden. So let's unhide it, which is that library here. And I played with the digit here to, to know what I need to do, what focus distance, what focal length I need to have the best effect. So look here, if I put a focus distance too far, everything is blurry. But if I go back to what I was, it was 0 0.02. It was just perfect focus on where I wanted. I can adjust the bokeh so everything is way more blurry or you can just cut it off and nothing is blurry. So Leva is really useful when you need to fine tune some parameters and you want to see uh, the result in life. Now let's have a look at how I made this Christmas ball animation with the color changing. I created a standard material because I didn't want to use my texture and material I have made for my Christmas tree. I said tone mapped to false so the bloom is working on it and we need to add some intensity emission so the bloom take it in account. But if, if, if we go back if we go back to our effect on the bloom, we said when the light is more than one, it will start to bloom. But by default, if you say tone map to true, which is the default value, everything you will want to put above one will be go back to one, which is full white, and it won't, it won't bloom for this reason. And in a use frame, I did something really ugly, is when we reach the light max, which I defined to, to five, we are randomizing our red and green and blue kernel to have new colors. 
and we are increasing only one of them so either red green or blue so we don't end up with white value but either red or green or blue and once it's done it's generating a new color and the fact here that we have a random value means it's not perfect red or perfect green so it's always a different color sketching process I started by building a Christmas tree and a gift model. I admit I didn't know yet what I would build. I loaded the scene with three JS but looked ugly without lighting. After some light and reflection material, I tried to create a cool effect with the gifts. I generated them randomly around the tree and tried to animate them. I randomized their colors. Played with effects to see if the scene could be visually interesting. Then went back to the animation and had that cool explosion animation ID based on scroll. Decided I should hide them behind the stars so I lowered and animated the Christmas tree. Played a lot with the background colors. Tried to add clouds to have a nice effect. Added some text to make it a postcard experience. Decided to put the background black again which allowed me to add some stars. Added the stage positioned behind before scrolling so it really looks like a card. Added two centers for the party time and made an HUD for instructions. I always like that sticky feel over a 3D scene. The final touch was to make it responsive. Thanks for watching, of course I wish you Merry Christmas Eve preparations. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button as it helps this channel grow. If you want to see more coding tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thanks again for watching, bye bye.